Good evening once more. Welcome to the Truth Coat Transformation Thursday. I am your host, Minister Just Austin Lane. I just got to let it play for a minute. Y'all come on and lock in. Come on and join us. We don't own the rights to this music, but thank you for this song. Thank you. Thursday. It's Thursday and I'm sure that you wish it was Friday already so you can count your days to the weekend and you still need him to do something for you. Won't you come and join us tonight? Won't you tag a friend tonight? Tell him, hey, Minister Lane is on and he's going to wrap this thing up and mark tonight. Maybe, maybe not, but we're going to definitely do some truthful transformation Thursday. Come on and join us now. Yeah, Sister Houston, happy birthday. Happy birthday to my big cousin, Sissy Debbie Houston. Happy birthday. Everybody is 16. We love you. I want to wish my mama a, a happy birthday again. Her birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Miss Lawrence Pratt. We love you too. Thank you. October is filled with a lot of people having birthdays, and we just love on you. We just send nothing but love to you. May you have the happiest of cake days. If we already had it or if it's still yet to come, the happiest of cake days. Uh, Sister Savannah Johnson had a birthday last Sunday. Uh, my gosh, man, you guys just are getting younger and younger on me. All this gray, I'm getting old, y'all getting younger. Must be something in the water. Oh, we're going to be talking about water tonight. Yes, we're going to talk about our Lord and Savior walking on water. Won't you join us tonight? Tag a friend. Truthful Transformation Thursday here at the corner of Jane and Payne, right off of Frankfurt Avenue, 2300 Payne Street, Beargrass Missionary Baptist Church. You should join us. You still can. The doors of the church are open. I'm here in the sanctuary right now. Oh my gosh, yes, I'm so ready to dive into tonight's lesson. Can't nobody do me like Jesus, and if he don't do nothing else, mm, he has already done enough. Won't you testify with me tonight? Don't you feel like talking about your Lord and Savior tonight? I know I do. Man, after this week, I know I do. Yes, and we thank you. Welcome again, welcome again, welcome again. Oh, we're so glad to have so many of you come in tonight. Uh, I am Minister Just Austin Lane, filling in for our pastor, uh, Reverend Matthew E. Smizer tonight, as we dive into discipleship on our Truthful Transformation Thursday. Uh, you know, we've been 
really working really hard in this book of Mark tonight, and uh, Mark chapter 6. So you can get your Bibles together, get your pen and paper together. I've got some notes for you. My gosh, I tell you, if you have had an opportunity today to help somebody else, uh, if you haven't had an opportunity today to help somebody, won't you try? Won't you still give it a shot? It's not nowhere near the fourth hour. Uh, won't you please try to help somebody else before the evening is over? We want to definitely send out our prayers to uh, my son, your son, uh, Jesse Lane, who is recovering better now at uh, UofL Hospital, room 901. Uh, he doesn't mind visitors, and he also doesn't mind you supporting him and his his book, which is his third writing assignment that he has done. It's on Amazon. It's called Crisis. Ours came in the mail the other day, uh, and uh, I, I I just been so nervous. I haven't even done anything but opened it and didn't want to start reading until I could read it all the way through. I just feel uh, so proud to be uh, able to share that with you, and I know he's proud to be able to share his experiences, which have not been easy with the rest of the world. So we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your concern. We thank you for lifting up the Lane family in every aspect when you have and when you do. We also want to say that Sister Sonia Mae Clayton has made it home safely. We're so glad to know that she couldn't even, they couldn't hold her back is what Brother brother Clayton told me. They couldn't hold her back at the rehab center. She was moving to bed uh, ahead of them, and uh, we're just so glad that her spirit has not, has not uh, been tarnished. Sister Joan Hughes, we love you. Thank you. And I just, I just want to send out a special shout out, man, that if you want to see a miracle, if you want to see a miracle, this Sunday, 2300 Payne Street, 10 o'clock, we are going to be so privileged to watch God do something wonderful. We're going to baptize not one, not two, not three, not four, but five, five souls who have asked the Lord to be their Savior. And we're going to do that this Sunday morning at 2300 Payne Street. So won't you come and join us? Service starts at 10, and we're normally we're finished somewhere a little bit after 11. But gosh, isn't it a wonderful thing when even today, in 2024, men and women still know, are learning, that they need to have a power greater than themselves, and why not call them Jesus? Before we start tonight, the book of Mark, join me in a open universal prayer for those right now. Father God, we want to thank you for those souls, those five souls, Father God, that have accepted you as their Savior. We praise you right now for allowing your spirit to be shown in this house where they will want to be a part of your eternal family. Father God, we ask that you bless right now every Beargrass member, every member of every church door that's opened in your name, in the name of Christ Jesus, Father God. And we ask that you would be with the young man's family <clears throat> in Dallas that was gunned down so so harshly uh, over a cell phone. Uh, Father God, I ask that you would just continue to be with the city of Louisville at large, Father God. Uh, there are those who are still in need, and there are those that need help. And Father God, we ask that if it would be on our hearts, if you would lay it on our hearts to help someone, please let us help them with the truth and sincerity that you require from your children. Father God, we ask that you would bless this hour right now, that your words be spoken and not mine. Father God, we ask that you continue to let this uh, broadcast help those whenever it's watched. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I love saying amen, amen. I love saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you get your Bibles out, your phone devices, your however you want to do it, pull up to Mark chapter 6. Now, we're going to talk about this, man, because last week, Pastor was... Oh, man, did he dive in there? Yes, he did. He dived in there when he was talking about the feeding the 5,000. Man, and this lesson tonight is even just as powerful because this lesson demonstrates uh, Jesus' divinity, uh, his, his divine power, the presence in the midst of humans. And, oh, my gosh, it's just, it's just a powerful piece. So we're going to pick up tonight at Mark chapter, Mark chapter 6. We're going to pick up at verse 45. And hopefully we'll get as close as we can to um, <clears throat> verse 55. I, I, I'm prepared. I mean, ver, yeah, I'm prepared for verse 55. We'll see how close we can get. Uh, but let's start with the first verse. Uh, I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. And what I'll do is let me just go ahead and start reading all the way through uh, 
the chapter and then we'll go back and we'll cross the field again and we'll dissect this thing the way it properly needs to be done. Um, reading from the NI, uh, the New King James Version, it says, verse 45, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethesda, while he sent the multitude away. Verse 46, and when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Now, when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then he saw, then he saw them straining at rowing, for the winds was against them. Now, about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea, and he would have passed them by. Verse 49. And when, he, and when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out. For they, had saw, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. I'm, you know what, let me just stop right there for a moment so we can get right into this. I really do want to get into it. Uh, I'm going to tell you that this lesson has a lot of parallel verses in it from the Old Testament that make it um, relevant to what Jesus' acts were. I, I don't think, you know how you hear people say all the time, uh, nothing happens in God's eye by, in God's world by happenstance. Nothing happens without God's approval. And some of the significance that we're going to learn tonight just blew me away. I mean, I am telling you, I'm, I am not a, uh, a, a scholar of, of this word. I wish that I uh, could could know more of the back the back door of the the Greek and the Hebrew and 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 I think sometimes man some people know that man and they can just take you down a, a rabbit hole and you be like oh my gosh it's overwhelming and so what I've learned to do in in my ministry and my growth of being a Christian disciple I understand that. Everything has a, a past, and I try to find the relevancy of it today in my life. And I'm so grateful that God works with me, and he walks with me, and he allows me to find the relevance of each and every scripture, each and every verse to today's um, day and time. And I need that for me. I, I, I know a lot of people uh, have their own opinions, and I think that's the problem today. People have their own opinions of the word of God being uh messed with or, or not taken back in the right context or taken out of context and and i'm gonna tell you that if you allow that type of stuff to to defer you from reading the word of god then it was doing exactly what it was supposed to do but because of those comments i like to read the scripture and you know i, I like reading other other passages i like reading uh, uh, the, the verses in the King James. I like reading the verses in the New King James. I like to read the verses in the NIV. I like to use, read verses in what I, I use for myself. Um, I'm, I'm going to promote it because it's mine. Uh, Celebrate Recovery Bible, which helps me with the uh, eight spiritual principles of, of recovery as well. So whatever, what's the word I'm looking for? Whatever uh, translation that you use use something amen amen so verse verse 45 immediately i i just had i just had to get that out there i had to get that out there that was that was on my heart verse 45 it says immediately he made his disciples to go into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of bethesda uh while he sent the multitude away now you got to remember we're talking about there was over five thousand folks that jesus had just sat there and fed with what they only had was uh, some barley loaves and, and a couple of fish. Now, I am certain, I am certain without a doubt that even the disciples were amazed. Even the disciples were caught off guard about what had just happened. And, you know, you can, you can read a lot of things about how uh, it was done, how he broke the bread in the basket. And, and I, I even searched just to find out. Because in my mind, I want to know how can you sit and see two pieces of fish keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. 
that was a miracle, you know. Then that's what God did. That's what Jesus says. He is a miracle maker because he believes that um, we need to be able to see some miracles in our lives. So he sent his disciples away so that they wouldn't get, I guess, uh, overwhelmed by the mass of people who are now wanting to call him, you know, the the king, and and, and they wanted him to to go ahead and, and help free the people from the Roman Empire rule at the time. I mean, come on, this guy just fed 5,000 people with two pieces of fish. Okay, he's it's definitely time him to take over. It's, it, we want this now. So I'm sure there was a lot of talk about, okay, uh, here, what do you want us to do? Let's get arms. Because no one ever saw Jesus doing what he did. He was the he was the Messiah to come. He was the chosen one, uh, but they didn't know that he was going to come the way he came. What they were expecting was they were expecting a general, like a warrior. They was wanting somebody to slash the head off the Roman Empire, and they thought it was Rome. They was it was going to be taken by force, but that's not how Jesus works. So in that verse, uh, he sent his disciples away. He did it immediately, because I, I'm sure people were still overwhelmed. Uh, another way of his intentionally sending them away uh, to a situation where they would maybe he sent them to the water immediately because he knew they was going to face some difficulty there. Maybe Jesus was given another example of his divinity to his disciples by sending them away. And then it almost seems like it almost seems like Jesus sent them into trouble that he sent them into peril. And that could be one way of con construing this verse. Uh, if you would turn to, um, let me see, I wrote one down. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Matthew, verse, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. And, and we're going to dance, uh, I mean, because, man, I found a lot of information when I started to try to ask God's intervention on what this meant and what that meant. Some scriptures came to me and, and some, and, his spirit fell on me and gave me some things that I was really struggling with. It's amazing that when you start to study God's word, how it will you will, it will find its application towards your life right now. Uh, Matthew verse four, Matthew chapter four, verse one. Uh, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Just as the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, here in lies Jesus leading his disciples, is what I was getting at, into a challenging situation. Uh, verse, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led into the Spirit, into the wilderness, to be tempted by the devil. And immediately Jesus sent his disciples uh, to, be, to be challenged. Is a plain and simple way of looking at it. Uh, but the funny thing, if what have you heard people say? If Jesus leads you to it, he'll lead you through it. And uh, sometimes in our lives today, whether we're facing uh, personal situations, are we living with life in the global sense of what's going on today? Whether it's us still trying to recover from a, a pandemic, you know, I, a lot of people don't want to believe that, but there are still a lot of folks that are trying to get stability back in their lives after that type of situation happens. And this verse shows that uh, God allows the storm not because uh, he wants us to feel abandoned or he wants us to be uh, distraught, but maybe for the purpose of drawing us closer to him. And I think if we don't recognize that each and every storm that we go through, my brothers, my sisters, uh, my wife, my children, my family, my friends, every situation that we go through, it's just a valuable opportunity for us to draw closer to Christ Jesus. And that is the miracle within itself. Uh, because trust and believe, you and I are like any other human being. Uh, we're not going to just up and just start humbling ourselves before God until we get our backs on fire or our back against the wall. Uh, I don't know. I think being a disciple doesn't mean that you have to be, uh, I love that, what's that word, uh, Tim and Lane? A fanatic. Yeah, you don't have to be a fanatic, but you gotta, but, but, but then I say, if you don't have to be a fanatic, but why not? Uh, some of you are fanatics for so many things, uh, popular, popular worldly views and popular, uh, 
uh, worldly scenarios. I mean, we go all in. Uh, the importance of TV shows and how we would put everything aside for this opportunity to to uh, escape into what world we want to escape from. And I asked you, why not escape into the Word of God? Hallelujah! Why not escape into the Word of God and, and dive into the stories that, that have precedence, that have meaning in your life? Uh, this story about Jesus walking on water, verse number 46, and when he had sent them away, he departed to go into the mountains to pray. Um, so I'm trying to put a timeline on this. They was on the mountain. They were being fed. The 5,000 were being fed. Jesus says, okay, listen, I need you to go. You guys are going to do what I go. Meet me on the other side while I get these people settled in. And he does that. And then he disperses the crowd. Can I stop right here and put a pen and says, only Jesus can disperse 5,000 folks without it being a problem. <laughs> I bet they had a whole lot of problems last night getting the crowds to disperse from that concert they had downtown. Uh, but Jesus said, I'm going to take care of this. You guys are going to get in the boat and I'll meet you on the other side. Uh, and then after he had sent them away, both, both sets, his disciples and the crowd, he went to a mountain to pray. And, you know, the emphasis of Jesus having an intimate relationship with the Father, he always prayed. And I, and I look at that now and I think we should pray more. And let's talk about prayer. Now, I'm really accustomed to getting my day started and I got to go, got to go, got to go. And sometimes I'll be ripping and running all day long, all day long. I'm gone. And yeah, you know, I have my talks with Jesus, and especially when you're faced with some of the, some of the things, some of the financial hurdles, and some of the uh, the shortcomings that you want not to be shortcomings in your life. Uh, you know, you you do that prayer on on tap. You know, you, you oh Lord help me. You just say those three word prayers. You know, but Jesus was so intimately dependent and knowing that his Father had his back that there was not, and, and the separation from the Father was so great that he would take time to go away by himself and set himself aside and pray. So I ask you, my brother, my sister, I ask you, my, my disciple, um, when's the last time you set yourself aside and went and prayed? Hmm, that's a good question. You know, there's a, um, there was a verse of this. If you would turn with me for a moment to Luke, chapter 5 verse 16 Luke chapter 5 verse 16 and it's just amazing how you will find these type of verses all throughout the Bible all throughout the Bible uh, Luke chapter 5 says but Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed um, it's the model that right there is the model for our lives. Jesus is constantly showing us that if we want to commune with God, essentially, we're going to have to take some time to be with God. We want to set some time aside to actually pray with God, it, especially when we're going through trials and tribulations. I mean, prayer is essential right now in 2024. I don't, I don't know what you're doing if you ain't praying, you know. Some folks would like to tell you that I don't know what you're doing if you ain't doing this and that, but I don't know what you're doing if you ain't praying. If you are ever going to get through your struggles, those struggles being relationships, careers, uh, even your spiritual lives, seeking time alone with God is the key. It's, that's it, point blank period. There is no middle of the road solution to this process. Folks cry out all the time about how they're going through things. And I'm I'm guilty of it. I, I'm not going to tell you today, and I'm not going to tell you tonight, man, that I am not guilty of crying out about how tough things are. And then I just have to increase my prayer life. But it's always easier said than done. I get it. I, you know, I'll stay so busy that I won't make time. But then I have to ask myself, I make time for a whole lot of things. We are so self-seeking and self-serving that it's going to be very hard for us to be committed disciples if we don't adopt, if we don't adopt a shift in our mindset 
that makes us want to be a part. And maybe that's why we go through some of our struggles. Maybe God knows that he's given us such a talent in us. He's put such a gift inside of each and every one of you that the only way he's going to get you to catch up to what he wants you to do is to ask some tribulations to determine on your life. And some of it, my brother, my sister, is chaos of our own making. Yeah, yeah, let's let's keep the finger on I. Let's keep it right on here. I am the uh, author and finisher of my own chaos a lot of times. And I will continue to make chaotic situations by not taking time to trust the process of trusting God. Uh, trusting God is a process. Uh, being a disciple for Christ is a process. Uh, one of the first things about that process we see right here. Uh, in, in Luke chapter 5 verse 16 but often Jesus withdrew himself to a lonely place and prayed uh, I love that movie uh, oh a prayer uh, prayer warrior what's it uh, you know you know the one where the, the, she went in that closet that old lady went in that closet and, and, and she pushed prayer through and talked that man yeah is that unrealistic to do is that unrealistic for you to take space in your home and make it the time the sanctum to where you sit and commune with God, is it essentially unrealistic for you to uh, set aside time to pray with God? I asked that question, and I'm really looking at this monitor wanting you to respond back. I want you to, to tell me, is it essentially unrealistic? Because if you say that, if, no, it's not unrealistic, then ask yourself the question, why haven't you committed to do it? And if you are committed, and let me not be the, the hit you over the head with a broomstick, if you are committed, then I urge you to urge others and encourage others to do exactly what you're doing. If you set up a prayer closet, why don't you go to your friend's house and say, girl, look, let me help you. Let me, I'm going to come over and do something for you. Why don't you go into your friends and your family's homes? And, and, and if you've already known how to set up a prayer closet, amen, exactly. Why don't you go in their homes and show them how to set up a prayer closet? You know, maybe sometimes the reason why we don't do is because we haven't been shown. What do you mean show? Yeah, show them how to take this set of clothes, put it on that side, get you a chair, set it right here, get you one of those portable light lamps. Show people how to give God that consecrated time, especially if you're doing it, Christians, especially if you are already in that mode, if you have already made your mind shift, if you've already got that mindset working in that direction, then I implore you, I, I urge you, do you want to help somebody? As much as we sit over people's houses and, and, and watch sporting events and, and eat and, 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 and those that drink and those who sit and, and have those type of engagements, why don't we have another type of engagement? Why don't we urge each other to, let's come over and create prayer closets in everybody's house. Ooh, wouldn't that be awesome? Did I just start something? Did I just start something? How about in the next upcoming year that we take once a month and we get together and we pick a member of our church family and ask them if they have a prayer closet or a place to pray. And we go into their homes and we help them find a sanctum where they can pray and devote some time to Christ. Hallelujah! <laughs> Did I just come up with something? I'm going to write that one down. We're going to talk about that one again. Amen. And now let's, um, before I get off track, I tell you, this lesson helped me. Uh, we can't always expect to weather the storms of our life without Christ. We have to want to have uh, help getting through the storms of life. Verse number 47. Now, when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Um, this verse reminded me of where I am today in my in my walk, in my discipleship, in my uh, ministry that uh, I wanted to give others. Um, man, sometimes you can feel really vulnerable and you can feel really distant from Jesus. Sometimes it can feel like we are so far away but want to be so close and still feel so far away. Have you ever felt like that? 
Have you ever felt like you were so far away physically from even knowing the touch of your Lord and Savior? Have you ever felt that you were so far away from the blessings of being called a child of God? Um, this verse, when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea. Now, we haven't even talked about what the boat was going through yet. We're just talking about the boat was in the middle of the sea. And I'm talking about when you envision in your mind this verse, verse number 47, you are the capsule. You are the boat. Uh, from the captain's table to the sternage, you are the boat. And sometimes we are in the middle of the sea. And I know at night, when we're supposed to be relaxing our minds and, and, and trying to decompress and, and get closer to God, uh, at nighttime is when that it seems like when that storm starts to raging even more uh, because now you're actually seeing the my what Jesse calls the mortality of how I can even fix this situation circumstances or whatever I'm in and that is a very vulnerable place to be because we can make some rash decisions when we're out in the middle by ourselves and feeling alone uh, I remember singing a song here uh, in this church when I was a kid and uh, I was like, you know what? Oh my gosh, where did that song come from? And what? And it was one of those songs that was actually a Bible verse. Uh, but guess what? I found it. Turn to Psalms 139. Tammy Lane, you're going to love this one. Turn to Psalms 139. Uh, we're going to do verses 7 and 10. Uh, let me turn with it myself right now. Psalms 1, 139. And I'm going to tell you that, uh, Sister Lantine, I'm so glad you, uh, Minister Lantine, so glad you're with us tonight. You remember us singing this song. Uh, I'm not going to sing it for you tonight. I promise you I'm not going to sing it for you tonight. We're just going to read this verse. Psalms 139, verses uh, 7 through 10. It says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend in the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to sing it. No, 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 no. There is no hiding place. <laughs> and that right there, oh, that brought me such a comfort to know that it makes no difference. My brother, my sister, my, ch my, my, my brother, my sister, there is no hiding place where God's presence can't bring light to that situation. Oh, that right there is, that's, that's hallelujah, that's shouting words right there. And we have to remind ourselves whether we're struggling with isolation by being alone, whether we're struggling with financial challenges, health challenges, amen, Jesse Lane. If we're, if we're faced with financial crisis for those who are struggling right now financially, if we're struggling with addiction or even struggling with trying to be a better Christian, don't you know, that this verse, Psalms 139, assures us that no matter how distant we feel from our Lord, God is never far from us. And us being the boat in verse, in this verse, verse 47, us being the boat in the middle of the sea. Now this next verse, I, I, I just want to chop this down piece by piece for a second because that's the way I did it. Uh, verse 48 is a beautiful, beautiful piece of information that I am even now to this moment still feeling chills by understanding what I just read. Verse 48 of Mark chapter 6. You still have your Bibles open with you, don't thank you. I want you to follow me on this one. It says, Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Now, about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. So, I've told you earlier, and I'll stand by it, I am not a, uh, <coughs> a, theolo a theologian, or I'm, not a, I'm not a Bible thumper, I can't say that I can tell you where to find what scripture, what verse. But I got a question in my head when I read this one. I said, okay, is this the same Jesus walking on water 
that Peter asked to walk on the water? See, I know that the uh, the disciples, uh, the apostles, they wrote, some of them wrote different versions of uh, how they, they interpret what happened. So uh, for your own information, uh, Mark, I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 14 talks about Peter uh, asking Jesus when Jesus walked on the on the water, can I come out? And he walked, and then he and he uh, sank when he took his eyes off of him. And Mark chapter six right here uh, is talking about Jesus walking on water. And I'm not certain. And I I started to look other places, and I ended up going down a rabbit hole about whether or not this was the same. So we're gonna we're gonna have to table that conversation for another time. But what I was able to look at was I was able to look at how Jesus saw his disciples straining, fighting against the wind. Now, that right there, I can apply it to you and I right now. I can tell you that many times in our life, one of the key things I know is that we are like the, those disciples trying to roll against the wind and the wind's pushing us back. I know we can have every effort to go forward and feel like we're getting pushed back. Amen. Can anybody testify with me tonight? Can I get a amen or a hallelujah? Because I know it is hard to walk sometimes and not get pushed back. Life does that to us. Life has a way of making us push back. And I, I just felt the piece of comfort when I reread the first part of this verse. The first part of this verse says, and then he, talking about Jesus, talking about our Lord and Savior, our provider, our redeemer, our protector, our counselor, our, oh my gosh, our help in the time of storm, saw them straining and fighting against the wind. He saw us. Jesus sees us right now in our struggle. And this verse highlights the, the key points that he saw us and not only did he see us, the time of night, meaning while we're worried over our struggles and right now when we're, oh man, this seems like there is no help. I'm in the 11th hour and there is no strength. Let me tell you what this verse said. This verse said he was about the fourth hour. The fourth watch. Um, the fourth watch meaning that was somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. So we're talking about that dead of night. That dead of night. I remember there was a lifestyle that I used to live that that dead of night was bewitching hours. There was nothing good going on between 3 and 6 a.m. to be out in, in this world against these streets, against the storm of night, but to hurt or harm someone else. Praise God for his saving grace. And I am reaffirmed, I am re-solidified tonight by reading this verse, and you should be too, that Jesus saw them straining at Rowan. He saw you are trying to fix your problems. He saw you are trying, he saw you straining at trying to find a solution. He saw you struggling. He saw you being tormented by what's going on in your world right now. And it got you up at night. It's got you restless at night. It's got you struggling at that bewitching hour. It's got you feeling all types of stomach aches and headaches and, and body aches and all you just beat down and, and distraught right there at that bewitching hour. And then he says this. He said he came to them in the fourth watch of the night. He came to them. And this is a testament that Jesus will come to you. Hallelujah. Jesus will come to you and help you in that moment. Hey, he walked on water. Trampled the storm. Walked on water to reach you when you were in the very midst, in the very dead center of the sea, the Sea of Galilee, man. It was dead center. It was right there, locked in, in the middle of the sea, man. Struggling, going through some stuff, going through, going through some things. <laughs> and he came to them. 
turn to Job chapter 9. Turn to Job chapter 9 for me. I just want to read one verse because it talked about the sea and, and Jesus. And uh, verse number 8. Job chapter 9, verse number 8. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He alone can make a way for you and yours and help you step on top of everything that's underfoot. That's, you know, let me share something about the waves, man. I'm, I'm, man, man, man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, waves wasn't just like this. No, man, they was colliding. You don't understand. They was coming on all sides. They was coming up. They was coming down. The waves, of, the waves of life hits you at every angle sometimes. Amen. Hallelujah. And here, Jesus just steps on top of it, man. Come on. The imagination of, of God is beautiful. This alone was what he wanted to show his disciples, man. He wanted to show them that I could have passed you by, but I didn't. I could have just walked past you. The Bible talks about how folks was just wanting to touch the hem of his garment as he walked by. He said, I could have walked by you. I could have just, this sovereignty right now. Job, Job was just emphasizing that God's sovereignty to, is over everything, over the human nature of the world. There is nothing. Walking on water demonstrates his, without a doubt, he is defined, that he is God. It, whether, whether, this was the same time that Peter asked to walk out with him. Whether this wasn't the same time that Peter asked to walk out with him. How about we just focus on, he walked on water. That been the miracle by itself. That he can tread the ways of life today that you might face. You know what's so beautiful? Um, God's word will never return void. Um, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Just just turn there real quick. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Um, and I know you remember this one. I, and I know I know for the newcomer, uh, for the new uh, Christian, this one is going to be really one to put in your um, mental Rolodex. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Give me one second and I'll be with you. It says, come to me, all of you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, so you're struggling. You seem like you ain't got no way out. Things of your back's against the wall. I mean, they're coming for you at every turn. Jesus says, come to me. Come here. Well, what do you mean, come to me? He means that I want you to do just these things. I want you to invite me into your life. And I will make the desire for you to want to be a part of a fellowship. You know why Jesus went away, away from other folks to speak to his father like we were talking about in verse 46? He went away because he understood what it's like to be in the presence of God. He understood that just being in the presence of was enough. He understood that there was some time that he wants to spend with his father by himself without any hustle and bustle of the world. He understood that this wasn't just uh, his struggle. This is the struggle for all of humanity, that he was going to carry the sins of the world on his shoulder. Why would he not, Father God, why would he not want to go and talk with God? I think what we have is a problem of disconnect because I think what we don't believe is that when we talk to God, God's going to talk back to us. Well, ask yourself that question. If I had a high bad conversation with you, that's not talking to me. You know, I, there's that high uh huh, how you doing by that? That's not having a communication. It said Jesus went away and spent time in the mountain on the mountain with his. So, yeah, we got to get these prayer clauses together, family. We got to start developing these spaces where we sit. And just as long as, just as much uh, as we spend scrolling on our phones, we need to spend 
equal that amount of time talking to the Lord. I mean, if you want to hear from him, you got to talk to him. Jesus sees our struggles anyway. The problem is he sees our struggles and, and waiting on us to come to him to get rest. He's like, why are you still facing these headwind on situations when all you, you got, you got a whole, look, you got spiritualities, you got principalities, you got personal trials, you got a whole battle against you right now because of the beautiful treasure that you don't even know how beautiful it is inside of you, your spirit, your spirit that wants to rejoin the father. The father wants your spirit to rejoin him. He's already told us about the promises of what happens when you do and you got all these headwind problems coming straight at you and you're not even wanting to lock into the solution. Jesus sees what you're going through. He saw his disciples struggling on the water. He saw his disciples struggling, rowing. The winds were hitting them so hard that they weren't able to row and he saw them struggling. Again, we in the very first verse, we thought that maybe he set that up. Maybe he wanted them to struggle so they could call on him. The Bible doesn't talk about the disciples calling on Jesus. They was trying to fight their way through the storm. Amen. Let's talk about that piece. Even his disciples, who was just with him, just saw a miracle of him feeding 5,000 folks and picking up baskets of leftovers. Got in a storm, and the Bible doesn't say in this, in this verse, Mark does not, Mark does not describe that the disciples called for Jesus. You know why? Because here's what I know, because in verse 49, in verse 49, it says, and when they saw him walking on, on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. Hold on. So you didn't call on Jesus while you was in your storm. You just thought you was going to make it through your storm on your own. You thought you was going to roll through this storm, right? And here you are fellowshipping with Jesus, walking and talking with Jesus. And that's if you have a daily devotion with the Lord. And they didn't. And they did. And they still didn't call on him. So then when they saw Jesus coming, they thought he was a ghost. Did I, hold on, did I even finish? I need to go back. Did I finish? Yeah, I did finish. You know, they they saw Jesus and they thought he was a ghost. They didn't immediately recognize him. Okay. Okay, let me help you with that piece, my brother, my sister. How many times in your in your Christian walk today have you been going through a storm, going through a situation, having a circumstance, having that blind fear, and Jesus starts working things out on your behalf? And you don't even recognize that he's working things out on your behalf. See, some things didn't get as bad as they could have been. It didn't get as bad as they should have been. Some things just kind of didn't go all the way to the left like it could have. And that's Jesus. I, I testify. That's Jesus working things out on your behalf. So they had a blind fear. I, and we, I fear, uh, oh my gosh, fear will destroy us, my brother, my sister. I understand. Some things are uh, uh, what we call... Uh, Good fear is to have. But when you're out there on that storm of life and you're trying to get life to not life you and you're trying to stand on the foundation of knowing that Jesus is who he is, well, that truth, that truth has to come from knowing his word. Actually, he's already given you his word. Let's not tarry too long, but turn to Isaiah verse 41, ch chapter 41, verse 10. Turn to Isaiah 41 and 10. <laughs> life is going to life. Life is going to life. And I, and I am, a, I'm a firm believer tonight, man. Uh, real, real, real talk. I've been afraid. Yeah. Man, I've been afraid. I've been afraid that my faith isn't going to be enough. Can I be honest with you tonight? Can I give you a truth that even in my fear, which does not rule me, which does not dictate me, it still pops up in me. Amen? Isaiah verse, chapter 41, verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Even in the fear. He says, yes, I will help you. God wants you to give him back his word. He does. The next time you're facing a situation, the next time you're facing a circumstance and you're afraid, give him back his word. Give him back his word where he said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with the righteousness of my hand. Yeah, that's the verse. Thank you, Sister Christine. Jesus is always going to be there to comfort you during your time of trouble. Let's not let the world fill us with uncertainty and doubt and confusion and fear because fear will overwhelm you. I mean, you will get overwhelmed by fear and then you'll be blinded to the works and the blessings that Jesus is putting in front of you. You know, Jesus is always a present work in your life. This verse talks about it. This verse said, man, he saw them. And when he saw them, man, he decided, I'm going to walk to them. And what time was it? The dead of night. Verse 49 says, and then when they saw him walking out on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost. Here's what I want you to understand. When Jesus starts walking in on your life situation, your storm, the waves, going to cease when Jesus starts walking to you on your situation that storm that wave it's going to cease and you don't have to be afraid I uh, I would love to tell you that it's not a day that goes by that I wonder and ask myself um, am I Am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? Because it seems like I keep getting overwhelmed. I keep getting overwhelming feelings of I'm not. And I understand today. I understand today that, see, um, if I wasn't doing God's work, then I wouldn't feel the pressures of life. You know, there's some folks that don't feel no pressures of life because they ain't got no God. They are their own gods. They are their own sanctum. They are their own higher powers. They are their own uh, beginning and end. Hallelujah. Have, God have mercy on them. I, that's not you today. That's not us today. If you are joining us tonight on this uh, broadcast, if you watch this broadcast later, you, you'll know that you are not them. So anticipate and expect some storms in your life. And I'm sorry, I know somebody sang a song one time that said, it seems like that it just keeps raining a little extra over here on me. And, and 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 I feel like I'm going to break. And I feel like I just need a break. I just need to see a clear path. And trust, he's got you. He's got you. He's watching over you. He's already, he's building character in you that you don't even know that you need. Um, verse 50 says, for they all saw him and they were troubled. Why were they troubled? That's a good question. Why was they, why were they troubled? Because they just saw Jesus walking on water. Hey, yo, ho, ho, right? And he talked to them. And Jesus said to them, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Verse 50. Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. It was like when that verse came out and I was like, okay, hold on. I know you're saying more to me in this verse. Let me find out what you're saying. I mean, there is no other way to identify it. Jesus is giving the testimony that he is God. Uh, the echo, you uh, I cannot say the Greek word like I want to. And I even wrote it down with the accent marks. I wish I had a screenshot. I could show it to you. But this phrase is the same phrase that was used in the old Testament when God revealed himself to Moses through the burning bush. I go, I am who I am. Uh, Jesus is saying that I am God. He's telling them to be of good cheer. When Jesus stepped onto the boat, he stepped from the troubled waters that they was going through 
through the storm that they were having in life, and he stepped into the house. Hallelujah. Jesus then stepped into your house. Now, I want to share something with you, my brother, my sister. If you ain't got a space for him in your house, hallelujah. Oh, man. If you have not prepared a place for you and him to sit down, my God. Do you think he wants to sit on your couch? No. Do you think he wants to sit in, in your favorite chair? <laughs> no. Jesus wants to sit in your prayer closet, the place where you went and called him up, the place that he's already visited, where he's accustomed to being. That's where he wants to come when he comes into your life, when he comes into your house, when he steps on your storm, steps on your storm and steps into your life. You got to have a place prepared for him. He's got to have a place to dwell. Oh, man. Mm -mm -mm. Look, I got one more verse I want to give you before we roll out. Uh, I think this is all I can get tonight. Turn to John chapter 16, verse 33. Yeah. Yes. Turn to John verse uh, 16, chapter 16, verse 33. And thank you, Christina. That was in Exodus uh, that, that, and she put that Greek word up for us. I am, I just, I just don't want to butcher it. I'm not even going to try to butcher it again, but that Greek word that I am God uh, was given to us in Greek. And that's what he spoke to Moses and Moses understood. So listen right here, John chapter 16, verse 33. If you turn there, I will put a button on this part. Uh, man, it says, um, it says this, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you would have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus actually has offered us the confining, binding words that you're going to need in your life to know that it's all good. He's already said, man, you're going to go through some things. You're going to have some tribulation. You're going to have some rough times. You're going to have some good. You're going to have some, you're going to have some time. <laughs> but be a good cheer. That word be a good cheer is like stay ever encouraged. Continue to trust in me. I've already overcome that. That's not even something that you should even worry about. You can't even worry about what you're going through right now because it's not even... It's not even, it's beneath you. I wish I had one of, I wish I had my niece with me right now to give me a phrase that they say today that would uh, make you better understand. Do not be afraid, whether we're first in, facing whatever situation you're going to face tonight, whatever situation you're going to face. Here's what happened. Your situation, Jesus has already saw, and he is walking on the water right now to meet you in the middle. See, you didn't already put yourself there out there so far but not too far where he couldn't see you. Uh, that's why the eagle uh, goes up onto a high perch so he can see it all. Jesus is the wings of the eagle. Ooh, hallelujah. So he sees you, and he's walking right now. Trust and believe, my brother and my sister, he is walking right now to, to be there for you. So the message is clear. I mean, be of good cheer. He's coming. He's already overcome the world. He showed you that, and you can rest in the victory that he's coming and that he's already overcome the world. You can be of good cheer knowing that he has got you. He is not going to leave you. There is, no situa there is no situation, there is no circumstance that you are going to face without, uh, without Christ Jesus being right there for you. I, I promise you, if you would only uh, today, if you would only today give yourself an opportunity to trust and believe that, that he is that he is in your corner, um, you will know that he is in your corner because he's going to walk on the water. He's going to prove himself to you. Um, I, I did have some some follow notes I want to bring to it in, uh, some things I wanted to bring out of this message. I we didn't get all the way to the end. I apologize, but it just it just got me overwhelmed. I wasn't able to finish it. But if you are struggling today, my my brother, my sister, if you are having a rough time, understand that God allows you to go through a challenge so that you can grow. Uh, sometimes we have to be in difficult situations so our strength and our faith would increase. Uh, prayer is essential. If you have, if you're not, if you dare, if you need to get 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 that prayer closet together, we're gonna talk about that some more. God's given me a. a a vision on that. So we're going to talk about that again. Uh, maybe we'll make that our New Year's uh, 
uh, desire. I don't want to say resolution, but how we make that our New Year drive, that every member here in Beargrass has a prayer closet, or maybe we can help every member, especially our new members. Praise God, we're going to baptize five this Sunday. We, hallelujah, we're going to be grateful for that. So remember, prayer is essential. Uh, three, Jesus knows your struggle. You ain't walking through it alone. Okay, don't 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 be afraid. Don't live in fear. And again, know that Jesus is God. He is He is the way and the light, the truth, the foundation, the only way to the Father is through the Son. And He is already walking on your storm to come to you. Isn't that amazing? He's already walking His way to come to you, my brothers, my sister. I am elated. Let's let let us let's pray. Let's pray, Father God. Father God, thank you for the words that you have allowed to be manifested and spoken tonight because now that they have been spoken, we are all held accountable for what we know you will do in our lives. And we thank you for that. We thank you for now being held accountable, Father God, that we know that we have to commit ourselves to a prayer place for you. We know, Father God, that you will walk on through the waters and the storms of our life and walk straight to us. And, and, and you have already told us to be a good cheer because you have already conquered any and every situation we face. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For those words being spoken now, we have to know that we have to trust in those words. Father God, continue to be with those who will watch this broadcast at a later date. Continue to be with those, Father God, who are with us tonight and continue to be with the foundation of your church, Father God, right here on the corner of Jane and Payne in 2300 Payne Street. You brought me here when I was 13 for a reason. And I thank you, Father God, for allowing me to know that this is the season that you are going to walk on my storm and that you're going to walk to me. And I want to be worthy of you walking to me on my storm. And I want to prepare a place for you to have when you come to me. I thank you, Father God, in the Christ Jesus name. I pray and ask these things. Amen. My brothers, my sister, I appreciate you joining me tonight for Truthful Transformation Thursday. I want you to know that we will always have the doors open on Thursday night. Come and join us next week. Uh, Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon, 12 o'clock, Bible study. And this Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, join us here. Won't you come? This is Stan Walker, uh, I'm going to let him close out this with his version of This is a God Stan. He's waiting on you. Deliver us serenity. Deliver us peace. Ain't that beautiful? Deliver us love. You know we need it. Yeah. That's why we need you now. And we hope to see you next week, this weekend, this week. We hope to hear from you. We love you. We, the Beargrass family, love you. Won't you come? Join us Sunday morning at 10 here in the sanctuary. And until next time, it has been my pleasure to walk with you through our truthful, Transformation Thirsty. Good night. Somewhere I can feel safe in my holy world. I just gotta let that play. Though. I love that song. I'm just trying to keep my voice. Why send the question, not blessing? Why, why did you do me wrong? 